another video starting with Double Lift and another patch from Riot Games. What's up, Game Weepers? Timestamp Seas is back yet. I hope you're all swell. And big news Riot have released the list of changes for the upcoming 11 8 patch. So, to know the champions getting buffed or nerfed and the items getting buffed or nerfed, you have got to stick around, and there are a ton of adjustments as well. And by the way, if these likes stop, these timestamps you see will stop as well. So, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. No, I'm just kidding, guys. The Jizz would never do that to you. Now, one thing I'm definitely not kidding about is the eliteness of the Game Weep website. Why do you think thousands of your fellow summoners are signed up? No doubt for more of the jizz, but to also reach their potential, right, to discover what their peak rank actually is. So if you want maximum gains this season, guys, click on one of the links in the description or comment section. All right, let's get into it, and we have got to start by talking about the expected champion buffs. So listen up, some red hot details here. Now, the first of six champions listed for getting buffed is one of the worst champions in the entire game. So if you play a Felios, 11-8 could be the first patch in season 11 where you actually have a fighting chance. Despite buffs to Runar's Hurricane early in the season, it's been no secret that dying on the Faithful is one of the easiest feats to accomplish. In a bot lane that's been dominated by hard engaged supports like Rail and Alistair, and in a game that's been defined by damage, it's near impossible to hard carry. Not to mention the 11 2 bug fix that reduced your Severum damage with Kraken Slayer. So, thankfully, and finally, Ryder right acknowledging one of the lowest win rates on the Rift and trying to improve it. Now, up next, we have a champion who has been buffed twice so far in Season 11. Well, for LeBlanc, the Rito Balance team are deciding to make it thrice. Despite having a higher win rate and higher elos, these previous buffs haven't really done much. I mean, they are buffs, don't get me wrong, like your Q and W costing less mana at later ranks and your health per level increase, but what does this mean for your weak wave clear? Your survivability, they are very minimal, so it may seem as if LeBlanc is getting heavily favoured by Riot, but the truth is, she is still struggling for the most part, and hopefully they actually make this buff worthwhile. Now another champion hopefully getting a worthwhile buff begins with the letter L, and is one of the most popular junglers going around, and this is Lee Sin. So for you blind monk fanatics, 11-8 is looking promising. Now you did get buffed in 11-4, that's correct, with your Q's cooldown decreased by a second at each rank, but this season it's been all about fast clearing junglers, and even more so when Rito reduced the XP in the jungle. This is why Hecarim and Udyr have been played as much as anyone, so hopefully the 11-8 buff helps in this regard, so you can then have more opportunity to pressure the enemy jungler and take over the early to mid game. So Felios, LeBlanc, Lee Sin, who could be next? Well I know, it's Vladimir, another champion who's already been buffed in 2021, but like LeBlanc and Lee Sin, the Crimson Reaper is still underperforming in high levels of play. Even the buffs to Cosmic Drive and Rabadon's Death Cap haven't been enough to push Vlad into real contention. But we also have to recognize the nerfs to Seeker's Arm God and Zonya's Hourglass, Hextech Rocket Belt, and the increased effectiveness of Grievous Wounds, and the fact that these are even more accessible for supports as well. So who knows what's coming in 11.8? My guess is that Riot make his hair longer. Kind of awkward though if you play with the Nosferatu skin. Now the penultimate champion receiving some 11.8 love is another mid lane mage who hasn't really been talked about this season because Cassiopeia, she hasn't exactly been strong. So an 11-8 buff seems legit and I'm looking forward to this one. Who can remember when Seraph's Embrace gave you a big ass shield back in the day? And I hate to mention it again guys, but I have to. The Seeker's Arm Guard nerf made you even more killable. Like Aphelios, your damage output is as high as anyone's, but it's actually about surviving for long enough to output this damage. Your sustain in lane is also weaker because of the 11-6 Ravenous Hunter nerf, so honestly, another worthy choice of a buff it seems. Now the final champion getting buffed guys is one of the most item reliant champions in the game. Zac, who can remember when the green blob had one of the highest win rates in the preseason? Well, this was all because of how OP Sunfire Aegis was. Now, Sunfire's damage has been recently reverted to its OP state, but it lost 100 health in 1025, and as we all know, HP is the most important stat for Zac. But the thing is, guys, Zac is still boasting a pretty healthy win rate, and certainly in lower elos, can be one of the hardest junglers to play against. You have amazing ganks, you're hard to kill, you have great team fighting, and team fighting or fiestering is what defines lower levels of play. So if this is a sizable buff, watch out for 11-8 Zac. And by the way, guys, any thoughts on the listed changes? Let me know exactly what they are in the comments. So those are the buffs guys, but it's now time to dampen the mood and talk about the 11-8 champions getting nerfed and what these could mean. So first up, we have two top laners on the 11-8 chopping block, and one of these just got buffed. So for Nah and then Yorick, well next patch you are allegedly not going to be as strong. And this could be the most typical Rito thing ever. They buff a champ into Oblivion to make some bank and then bring them back down to earth with a nerf. But it is probably true that Yorick is overperforming, especially when you throw the better Trinity Force into the mix as well. But it is unfortunate for Nah. Even though he's dominating pro play in solo queue it's a different story and he didn't even make our top 15 top laners countdown. The 11-6 nerf to your W was a bit of a hit and the increase in power of other top laners has made it harder to have as much of an impact. Even with Strybreaker's dash as stupid as it is, Nars win rate is hovering around 50%. It's not like this is 55% so a bit of a questionable nerf this one. Now up next guys we have two mid lane mages 
getting nerfed, and LS is going to have to tell his low elo students to pick another champion next patch because Annie is one of them, and the other is Orianna. So I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but Annie has had one of the highest win rates overall for ages, and that's because her synergy with the Luden's Tempest Mythic is arguably the strongest in the game. The movement speed you get gives you another way of initiating trades and fights, and with magic resist items sucking as much as they do, it really has been a fairy tale. Now for Orianna, different story. Yes, she has been picked a lot in pro play, but she isn't great in solo queue. There's very little coordination, of course, so for a control mage, your value decreases. Just compare this to an assassin, for example, all you have to worry about is yourself. And like Cassiopeia, you're pretty easy to kill. Okay, you have some resistances and a shield from your E, but no longer from Seras, and Seekers is a heck of a lot weaker. And it takes a while to really come online, and you don't have this time in most games. So really strange seeing Orianna on the 11-8 nerf list. Now the final champion nerf on the list at 11-8 changes, guys, is coming to a support, who is as popular as ever even after getting nerfed in 11-7. Unfortunately though for Thresh, another nerf is on its way next patch. Like Nara and Orianna, you are a priority pick in pro play, and this is what Riot tried to address last patch by taking away some power in the W Max playstyle. So honestly, who knows what Riot have in store for us here, we'll have to wait and see. Now as we get into the item buffs and nerfs guys, one thing that will 100% buff your Rift game is the game with website. Sorry I have to tell you about it again, but it's that damn good. If I'm uploading top tier content to it every single day, how can it not be? So to become the best player you can possibly be in season 11 guys, get signed up, links down below. Alright, so the first of one item buff coming up, yes there is only one item buff, is to an item that has already been buffed this season, and this is Frozen Heart. So if you play Nasus, if you play Malphite, even Rise potentially, this could be huge. I mean Nasus and Malphite are already broken, but since the Trinity Force change, you know it doesn't provide as much attack speed, Frozen Heart's impact decreases as well. Now they did buff the FH back in 11.3, so it only cost 2,500 gold, so what will it be this time? So we're now on to the last part of the video guys, and this of course is the item nerf section, and these are more often than not what really determine if a champion or role is going to be trash tier or OP tier. So here we go. Now the first of only two listed item nerfs in 11.8 is to an item being abused by one champion in particular at the moment, and the item is Titanic Hydra and the champion is Urgot. You see the on hit from the cleave passive guys is why this combo is so broken. It gets transferred into Urgot's W and is the reason behind Urgot having a top 3 win rate. But seeing as this is the League of Legends balance team we're talking about, they will probably nerf something completely different. And then the last item nerf on this 11.8 list guys before we get into all the adjustments is to a pair of boots that got buffed at the start of season 11. And these are the cooldown boots or Ionian boots of lucidity. And these have become so popular that even majors like Zoe and Ari have opted for these over sorcerer's shoes. For just 900 gold to get 20 ability haste it's kind of a big deal. And even assassins and fighters have been exploiting its value as well. For champions who actually need the cooldown like Silas though for example this might be a bit of a blow but how big of a blow we'll have to see. So those were the listed changes for 11.8 guys and I'm now going to give you all the champions and items getting adjusted next patch. So there are five champions right are trying to make viable in the jungle specifically and these include Zed, Darius, Mordekaiser, Morgana and Diana. Now if you made any of these champions are you guys keen to get in the jungle? Then we have the Ramus update which is coming sometime in 11.8 and a couple of other adjustments coming to top lane Dr. Mundo and top lane Rumble and I'm excited to see what this one is in particular. And finally as for the item adjustments guys we have four of them and these include Moonstone Renewer and Shirelia's Battle Song and Star for Flowing Water so all of you spellcasting support players get ready so Lulu, Janna and the like and finally Hextech Rocket Belt so Galio players, Vladimir players in fact most mage enthusiasts get enthused now for the actual changes guys if the right devs release the information at the time they usually do I'll be back same time tomorrow to give you the rundown you desperately need so make sure you hit that sub button and the bell so you don't miss it and as always thanks so much for watching and until then this has been Coach